Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. I'm a Power Platform developer. I had a question on my YouTube, so feel free to leave me a comment. You know, if you want to leave me a comment, maybe I can make a video out of it. So we have a question here from uh, Murat. Hopefully I say your name right. Uh, I'm, I'm trying. I, I'd rather try and fail than uh, not try and say your name. But it says, you know, I love tutorials. How to build a power app that allows multiple projects to their applications at once. You know, so how do you add multiples at once? Uh, there's, there's many different ways to do that. Let's, let's focus on that main question though, all right? So I'm gonna create a blank uh, Power App. Now you could do Dataverse if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna do a blank Canvas app. And I'm gonna call it Menu because I have a SharePoint site right now. And just because I'm using SharePoint doesn't mean you have to use SharePoint. You can use Dataverse, you know, whatever your backend that you wanna use, SQL. You can do the same thing. It's just, this is in my dev tenant. I have free licenses. I can use SharePoint easily. So we have a Power App, right? And I'm gonna add in a form and it's gonna connect to that data source. So we're gonna go to SharePoint. And I'm gonna connect to my new site, which is called Favorite Food. So just pretend that's your project site and I have a list here called menu. And I'm gonna to connect to it. And then in my data source at the top here, I'm just gonna to connect to that SharePoint list. And it's gonna bring in all those fields in here, right? So, you know, maybe you have attachments, maybe you don't. Attachments is not necessary, we can take it out. We have a few different items. Maybe the title is a little bit longer, the food type, the calories, and the allergies. Now, one thing that I showed before in a previous video is how to make like some space in there. One great way to add space is to go to edit fields, is to actually come right over here. You see add a field, then come to the three dots right here. We can add a custom card. And so this custom card, we can add some space in there. You know, maybe we want a title, we want to name some things out. All right, so I kind of resized that. We have a custom card. We could add some color to it if we wanted to. So once you have that custom card in there with a little bit of color, normally I'll add a button just so we can put it into new mode. So we'll just add a button. And I'll just say this form is, uh, this button does new form, form one. So I'm not gonna rename everything for you know the constraints and the time limit of this video. So now we have a button, we hit play and our form becomes new. And you notice that, you know, it's a nice little blue title bar here. We can add our own text if we wanted to, text label, you know, and put in details. And probably center it, you know, is probably another thing we would like to do. So just imagine if you had a large form. I don't wanna spend all the time doing that, but what I do wanna do is spend time showing how to loop in multiple. All right, so we have our form. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a gallery. Insert a vertical gallery. Now, just so you know, you can do this any way you'd like. I'm just showing you how you can do this quickly in a real fast way. So we just have a gallery here. We don't need the image, maybe just a subtitle title. And we'll thin this out. We'll pull the subtitle up here. Just make this nice and thin, almost kind of like Excel-like. And I'll get rid of this arrow. The arrow doesn't make sense for me. Now what we're gonna connect the gallery to is actually gonna be what's called a collection. And I've gone over this many times, but a collection is just a set of data that you store in the runtime of the app. So as soon as you exit out of this app, that data is gonna go away. It's, it's only gonna be stored while you're running the app. So I'm gonna add, let's say an icon. Let's add an icon. Maybe, let's see, come to do plus or, or is it add? Another tip is when you're adding icons, you don't have to worry about the icon that you choose at first. You can put the icon in anywhere you'd like and then you can change it here. 
and you can get you know a lot more options if you'd like. So I just added a big plus icon. Now you can make your own icons. I've shown videos on how to do that using Mid Journey, using AI, create your own icons, create your own buttons. But I, I just wanna stay on the topic at hand. We want to make a collection. So what I'm gonna do here is on this plus icon, I'm gonna say collect. And then we gotta name our collection. We're gonna call it call menu. So for shortening collection menu. And the first item, is going to be this title. And the way you wanna do this is give it the same name that's in your data source. It'll just make things easier. So title, data card, value one dot text. The next one, I have a few, I have food type, calories, allergies. Food type, data card, value two dot text. Allergies, did I spell allergies right? I feel like I spe spelled allergies wrong. Hold on, let me see, I think there's two L's. All right, I spelled allergies wrong, let me fix it. I make mistakes, sorry. Things happen, we'll be all right. Let me spell allergies correctly. And you know, this kind of goes into it some more, just, it's good that I make mistakes. I'll hit refresh, and you notice now it fixed the spelling. So if you ever make a little spelling mistake, uh, let's go into a little bit more. So check this out. So if you look up in here, we're in SharePoint. Now you can see the name is allergies, but actually SharePoint created this field like in a hidden behind the scenes field. If we click on allergies, you'll notice that my column name is allergies. I spelled it correctly, but the internal hidden name that SharePoint gave the column is actually still misspelled. You can't fix this, right? It's still with one L. So if you're ever doing real coding, you gotta think about that. Just because you rename something doesn't mean that's what the internal name is in SharePoint. That's just a random tip. It comes up, uh, sometimes people get confused, but you can find that real name if you go to the URL of that column. All right, so now we're back. We fixed allergies here. It's now correct. So we're gonna spell it right here, allergies. And that's gonna be data card value three dot text. Okay, now we're gonna do, looks like I, I have the wrong order. So this must be data card value four. So that is four. We'll connect it correctly. So this is four. And now we want calories. All right, so let's take a look at this collection here that I created. So. I'm collecting, the name of my collection is called Call Menu. I gave that my name, that's the name that I came up with. The first one we're gonna write to, write to the first field column that we're gonna write to is title, then food type, then allergies, then calories. And you notice it's just each one of these text boxes. All right, so we've created a collection. Every time we hit this plus button, it's gonna create a collection of those field types in the memory of the app. So the gallery here, we're gonna replace it with our collection. And so we'll write in a title like spaghetti. The food type is pasta. And we'll say the allergy is wheat and calories um, 350. And so we'll hit plus. Now I didn't write anything in here. Let me put in the labels so we have wheat, so that's good. Let's bring in the allergies, let's make this title. And the next one we'll make over here, the food type. And then we'll have the allergies. And then finally the calories. All right, so now we can add another one. So now let's do um, cheesecake. Uh, dessert. Allergies, um, milk. Calories, it's, it's up there. It's a big piece of cheesecake. And so we'll hit add. 
So now we have two things on our collection. Right now we have not written to our data source yet. So whatever your data source is, for me it's SharePoint, we have not written here. We have not written to our data source yet. Um, let's add one more. Let's add um, mashed potatoes, food type, um, side item, allergies. I don't know all the allergies, I'm sorry. Uh, people we will just say this one has none it probably has something in there and calories all right so now we have three items in our collection now the next thing we want to do is write all of these to our data source so this is specifically from your question so now that you have the collection we need another button or icon or, or whatever you want to do and this icon is going to write to data source. All right, so this icon right here is going to write to the data source. In the icon, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what's called a loop statement, or, or that's the way I think of it. In, in Power Apps, it's called for all. So it's for all. For all what? What, what are we gonna do for all? For all the collection menu. For all the items in collection menu, so we have three, spaghetti, cheesecake, mashed potatoes, we're going to patch. We're going to patch menu, which is the name of my SharePoint list, the name of my data source, menu. We're gonna patch menu, and what are we gonna patch? We're gonna patch title is title. Food type is food type. Allergies, we can click on it here, is allergies. Calories, is calories. So we need our ending parentheses, two of them. Now after we write, what we want to do is clear the collection. So I'm gonna do clear after a semicolon here, so we need a semicolon. We're going to clear call menu after we write to the data source. All right, so now that we have our, our three items in here, we're gonna write to the data source. Let me move my uh, the button a little bit. Let's see, Just I, I just realized my face was a little bit in the way. All right, so now the button is there. So this button, now we're gonna to write to our data source. We're gonna hit the write button. It's looping through for all, writing to SharePoint to our data source. We refresh, boom. All three of those items have now written. Now that's uh, one way to do it. There's many, many, many different ways to do this, right? That's just a really fast way to do it. Of course, there's plenty of different options. Another option is to just have a gallery. And in this gallery, we're not gonna write, have anything in there, no data source. We're gonna say it's just title in there. And we're gonna take title out and we'll insert text inputs. And imagine they take up the entire space. All right, we have text inputs in there. We press play. We have a few text inputs. We're gonna create another collection. So in this button, we're gonna create a new button. In this button, we're gonna create another collection. So we're gonna do collect um, my input. And we're gonna collect the same things over again. So title, but we're gonna do blank. Uh, we're going to do, what is it, a uh, food type, blank, allergies, blank, calories is blank. All right, so now we're creating another collection. In here, in our gallery, we're going to set this up as my input, the name of the collection. So now when we hit play, you can see it's blank but every time we hit the button, we get another line. 
And then we need a clear button. So this button is actually going to clear my input. So this will be clear. And this will be new line. So clear, new line, et cetera, et cetera. We can now remove the text input part in there, make this blank. All right, so we have it blank in there. Let's give us some space. Now we can have a button that's going to write. So we'll put it right here, write to data source again. Write to data source. We have input one, underscore one, two, three. Now, of course, you would probably want to put in your labels at the top here. So we would have title. Food type. Allergies and calories. Oh, did it in the wrong order, but we'll fix that. All right, so this is actually here and allergies is here. Now, of course, you want to make this pretty. I'm just, you know, going through this quickly. You would want to make this, you know, perfect work on the CSS yourself. Okay, so now when we write to data source, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the for all. For all. Um, what are we going to do for all? We're going to do the gallery two here. For all, gallery two dot all items. We're going to patch. Uh, what are we going to patch? We're going to patch menu, the SharePoint data source. And what are we going to patch? This time we're going to patch title as text input one dot text. Uh, food type as text input to dot text allergies let's see tech oh text input oh not input two it's one underscore one that's because I copy pasted text input one underscore two dot text and finally calories as text input one underscore three dot text. So now we have a bunch of our lines. We can clear, create new. In the title, we can do uh, carrots, vegetable, allergies, none, uh, calories, 15. We can create another new line. Um, something delicious. What's something? Uh, a milkshake. This is a drink. Um, lactose. I should have done that before with the milk and the calories is up there 500. So now we have two line items. All we have to do is hit write to data source. Let's make sure everything's correct. I think I'm missing a parenthesis, missing one parenthesis. And then after we write, what do we want to do? We want to clear the collection, my input. Okay. So now we just hit write to data source. Boom, boom, clears the collection out of the memory of the app. We check out our data source in the back end, refresh. We have our two new line items. So those are two examples of how to write multiple um, projects at a time. This goes back to your question, the question from Murat. So I appreciate the question. Thank you. It, it gives me reasons to create videos. I actually like creating videos. So um, please keep the questions coming and I'll try and make videos about it. This was a um, very simple concept. I wanted to focus on that main part of the question, which was, you know, how to allow users to register multiple projects in their application at once. So uh, thank you all for watching. My name is Andrew Hess. If you're liking this content, if you have a question for me, please like and subscribe. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I appreciate it. My name is Andrew Hess. Thank you.